Today we're going to be unboxing the MSI P67A GD65. So this is an LGA 1155 motherboard, which means it is compatible with LGA 1155 Intel Core Series processors. This is a next generation platform compared to the last gen 1156, despite the change in socket number, which actually goes down by one pin. So let's have a look at what MSI has presented with presented us with for their P67A series of boards. So first of all, we have Military Class 2. So basically this is an improvement on the Military Class concept that MSI has been doing for a couple of board generations now. High stability components such as uh, being able to deliver th up to 30% more power, being able to last up to 10 years. So that's the kind of component choices that they're making for the capacitors as well as for the chokes. The entire power delivery system of their military class series components is designed to operate silently and to deliver clean power to your parts. It comes with a three-year warranty in US, Canada, and Mexico. Unlike the last generation ones, we've got four USB 3.0 ports and four SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. So on the P55 uh, Intel boards, we used to see two and two of each of those. Okay, we have one second overclocking, so MSI has improved their OC Genie. It is now version two, so that's their one button overclocking procedure. Can't really call it a procedure if it's one button, can you? You just push the button. It's very simple. Okay, we have full support for NVIDIA SLI technology, ATI Crossfire, which I guess is now AMD Crossfire. It's Windows 7 ready, and then you've also got that Intel stuff, which we talked about already. Let's have a look at what they have to say for themselves on the back of the board. We've got a bit of a reiteration of Military Class 2. So eight times lifespan for these guys, 30% higher current for these chokes, and 10 plus years. So they're saying 12 years of lifetime under full load gaming or up to 40 years in an office environment. So there you go. So basically by the time this motherboard dies, you probably won't care is I think what they're trying to say. We've also got a couple other features here, Instant OC, so that's their control center software. We've got Supercharger, so you can charge your iPad and iPhone at high speed even when your PC is shut down. That's a pretty neat feature. Click BIOS times two. So applies the Unify, oh yeah, EFI BIOS. I haven't even talked about that yet. So MSI's P67 boards feature an EFI BIOS, which means that you have support for like a mouse in the BIOS. It's pretty much a change that I wish we'd had years ago, but BIOS technology has made a huge leap with this generation of boards from MSI. Can we just set up there? And uh, Winky 3, so that's their... Um, quick boot into a bare bones OS so you can uh, browse the internet and do a couple rudimentary things with your board without actually booting into Windows. So the motherboard is the first thing we find once we open up the packaging, but I'm just teasing you with that. We're actually going to look at the accessories first. All right, we have a multi GPU SLI video link card. So I guess what they mean is SLI bridge. We have a couple SATA six gigabit per second cables. We have a straight one and a right angle. Okay, next we have Tape shut, what is this? Ooh, this is exciting. Okay, once I get it out of the package, I'll be able to, to show you guys why it's exciting. Finally, we have USB 3.0 header, or we have a USB 3.0 header implemented right on the board rather than having like a goofy internal USB 3 slot that then you run a cable to and then like run that out the back of your case. So this is a header which will hopefully support front USB in the future but for now they're giving you a PCI bracket with full support for USB 3.0 super speed. So two on the back panel, two off of a header. So glad to see that. Two more SATA cables, one straight, one right angle. Those are the same as the other ones, I guess. And then we have a Molex to SATA power adapter, just in case you don't have enough SATA power connectors on your board. So here's uh, the MSI M connector for easily installing your front panel switches and whatnot. Here's an IO shield, which is labeled. We have a drivers and utilities disc, which you should throw away and download the latest. We have, ooh, VCheck, nice. So this board includes VCheck points, so you can use your multimeter to actually manually check down to a much better accuracy than any BIOS reading is gonna give you what voltage you're feeding to your components. Here's a quick installation guide. Here is 
a software application user guide, so they show you how to use the MSI software that you might need to use, like Control Center. And last but not least, the full user's guide, and this is the European version. This is a sample board, so I'm assuming you'll get a North American version with your board if you live in North America, which not all of my viewers do. So that was, yeah, okay. Not sure where I was going with that, guys. Here we go. So this is it. This is the P67A GD65. I'm just going to peel off these stickers. One sec overclocking with OC Genie. Military Class 2. We've covered all of that so far. So let's have a look at the overall layout of this board. Just take off all the plastic and everything. Really love the look of this board. It's got like just the right amount of shininess. So uh, there, this is actually quite reflective. We'll do the, uh, the finger test so you can see how reflective that is. Okay, really like that. I actually like glossy finishes on things. So let's start with the CPU socket. So here's your standard LGA 1155 socket. Okay, you've got a lever arm. So the CPU mounting is done in exactly the same way as LGA 1156. Up in the top left corner, exactly where it belongs, you've got your eight pin CPU power connector. Here are your MOSFETs, so this is your military class MOSFETs. They are cooled by one heat pipe between two separate little heat sinks. Okay, we have a PWM CPU fan connector. We have support for up to, I believe it goes up to 32 gigs, although please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe we do have support for up to eight gig DIMMs, although I really can't imagine why you would need 32 gigs. Uh, at this time, but uh, anyway, so four slots supporting dual channel memory. The cameraman's like getting away from, from me here. Up here in the top right, hopefully he can make his way back up here. In the top right, we have our V checkpoint. So you can, ch you've got two grounds, PCH, VCC, CPU, CPU VTT, and VCCP. We've got a couple more fans here. Here is our 24 pin power connector, right where it belongs on the right hand edge of the board. And then moving down here is our storage. So we have four SATA ports. Two of them are, or rather four of them, we have four banks. Okay, so two of the banks, that is four ports, are SATA 6 gigabit per second, and the other two, the black ones, are going to be SATA 2, that is 3 gigabit per second. Okay, next we have our front panel connectors, we have our OC Genie button, we have built-in switches for reset and power. Those are very handy if you're testing on an open bench like I often do. We have a USB, we have... Uh, Oh, cameraman wants to get a better look at those. Okay, we have USB moving over. Then we have Firewire. Here's our USB 3 header. So happy to see that finally integrated on a board. Now let's have a look at our PCIe slot layout. We have three PCIe 1X slots, two PCIe 16X slots, and two PCI slots. So I want to explain... So two slots is going to, are going to operate in dual 8x mode, whereas a single slot will operate in PCIe 16x mode. So this is just like P55. Now bear in mind, there is no measurable performance penalty for running in dual 16x mode. We've also got two PCI slots, so that's for any legacy devices you might have that do use PCI. And I really like this slot layout because it does give you support, even if you're using two dual slot cards for up to an additional one, two PCIe 1x and one PCI card so that's uh oh yeah so cameraman's checking out the chipset cooler you can see there's not a whole lot to it there's actually not a whole lot to the p67 chipset almost everything is on the cpu now including the memory controller and even the pcie lane controller so here on the back we find a number of things we find one two three four five six seven eight that's a big number usb 2.0 ports we find two usb 3.0 ports so that's a total of 10 usb ports on the back panel we have eSATA dual eSATA support. Then we also have one of those combo PS2 ports that I'm so fond of, so you can use either a keyboard or a mouse in it. We have a clear CMOS switch. Digital audio out is supported in both flavors, that is optical or coaxial. We have Firewire support, just in case you actually own a Firewire device. And we have Gigabit Ethernet. We also have support for 7.1 analog audio, and I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about the P67A GD65. Thank you for checking out my unboxing, and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.
A couple points to clarify about the P67AGD65. So it does have dual BIOS, physical BIOS chips. So that means you'd have to work things up pretty badly in order to corrupt both of those. So it should be just fine, whether you're flashing your BIOS or doing whatever else. And I wanted to also clarify what OC Genie 2 does. So on a P67 board, it still only does CPU overclocking, but on an H67 board, it also integrates GPU boost. So you can overclock the integrated graphics core on your new core processor. Another thing I also wanted to mention though, is that OC Genie, because of some of the limitations of the P67 platform, platform is only supported on K series unlocked processors. So please guys bear that in mind if you're planning to use OC Genie.